At 886,000 British soldiers lost their life in various theatres of war across World War I. Add to that the hundreds of thousands of soldiers who were from the British Empire at the time who also lost their lives. So today we have seen a solemn service, both the Queen and Prince Charles looking very solemn and even at times emotional as that service was held there at the Cenotaph. Of course, extremely significant today that Frank Walter Steinmeier, the German president, also laid a wreath. This is the first time a German head of state has laid a wreath at that cenotaph and you've got to remember just how sacred that cenotaph is. Uh, that is where the dead are remembered, the soldiers who didn't return to these shores from World War I. Of course, World War I, the enemy was mostly German. Uh, so very, very significant moment to have the German president there today laying that wreath and really a sign of the times perhaps and a tribute perhaps to the peace that these two countries now have uh, between them. And so certainly while some people found it perhaps a little uh, upsetting that a German may be laying a wreath at such a sacred site, for the most part it's been really well received here in the UK uh, that the German president was here. But it wasn't just at the Cenotaph that these uh, commemorations were going on. We've seen it right up and down the country in small towns, villages, on the beaches, similar services being held, uh, two minutes silence being marked right across the country. Interestingly, that two minute silence was something that was introduced uh, in 1990 by King George V and it's something that's been observed here in the UK on the 11th hour at the 11th day uh, every single year ever since then. Uh, but we're also seeing some more creative, if you like, ways of paying tribute to the soldiers as well. In one uh, small village there are posters being hung on a hundred doors which represent the hundred men from that village that went to war but never returned. So certainly, as you say, a solemn and for a lot of people emotional day here in the UK today. Sarah, let's talk a little bit about the British Empire because World War I really shook the, the British Empire as it was to its core, didn't it? I'm thinking about uh, the inclusion of empire countries like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India, um, many of whom went to fight for the crown but then ended up really also creating their own national identity. Well, that's exactly right, particularly for uh, New Zealand and Australia. It was the first time this war, World War I, that they'd fought not as part of the British Army but of, as, uh, as their own armies. So this was a coming of age, if you like, a really nation-defining moment for these countries. Uh, and they went to war seeing it as a call to arms from the mother country and they went with a sort of fervour, uh, imperialistic patri uh, patrioticness, if you like. Uh, that's why they went. That was the call they were answering. Uh, it was a different story, perhaps perhaps for uh, the Indian Army. At the time, it was only slightly smaller than the UK Army itself. It was very well trained. It was professional and it played a really big part uh, in the UK's campaigns. But these soldiers went to fight in a war that perhaps uh, they didn't know a lot about the cause or didn't have a lot of time for the cause, to put it quite frankly. At home, there was a nationalist movement going on. And when they returned, uh, some were even shunned because they had been seen to be shunning the nationalist movement and moving ahead uh, with the empire and then from World War One we did see uh, this period as you say of extreme change be it within the empire and many countries becoming independent but there were also other changes uh, within the UK that were forced on by World War One if you look at the vote of women uh, while all the men were away at the front the women were filling traditionally male roles so when the men came back from the front it was hard not to give the women the vote because they'd really been holding the country up in the men's absence during the war we saw a bit of a change in the class system here in the UK. So many of, of the aristocracy were killed at war. Around 17% of the aristocracy that went to war were killed. Uh, and so they didn't have quite the stronghold on the nation they had perhaps before World War I. And the advances in things like medical uh, equipment, uh, skin grafts discovered during World War I, post-traumatic stress disorder, a concept discovered or named during World War I. Uh, so plenty of changes back here in the UK post-World War I.